Good morning, folks. Lift those eyelids. The sun woke up violently. We've got a Mars weather report coming at the end. Mexican fault lines are destabilizing, and Yelverton's lab has etched another milestone on the belt, electricity as it is across the universe. But first, the sun woke up in the middle of a REM cycle and was not happy to have his eyes open. Far side and earth-facing eruptions took place as our star threw a bit of a tantrum. Let's come over to spaceweathernews.com. Check this out in 193 angstroms. Far side eruption is an obvious miss, although it presents coupling potential with Earth Monday night or Tuesday. And that filament that erupted on the Earth-facing side is also going to miss our planet, pushed due north, but may also couple with Earth early in the week as well. Earth-facing quiet kept the CMEs away and the solar flaring, stifling those sunspots, which don't look too impressive. No magnetic mixing of note, and these spots are calm thus far. The real story right now is that Earth's weakening magnetic shield has seen a second stream of particles in the coronal hole solar wind, and although it was not anything scary or major, our magnetosphere is currently under a strong disruption and storm condition. Eyes open for electrical, airline, and communications trouble today. Also got plasma penetrating into our atmosphere as our shield is still trying to dust himself off. Come on, big guy. About the only good news is that the geomagnetic storms have kept the lithospheric disruptions to a minimum, and although the coronal hole exits, both those CEMEs will couple with Earth in the next couple of days, and if the Mexican coastline hasn't settled down by then, we could be seeing a build-up to a much bigger one. Folks, this is our electricity and plasma lab down in Georgia. Billy running 90 kV through a vacuum chamber that still has the atmosphere inside. You are all used to seeing lightning, but as the vacuum begins to be pulled, watch what happens. The lightning begins to transform into filaments of plasma. There has been no change whatsoever in the voltage or amperage of the current. We're simply moving from Earth's atmosphere to outer space. Now since megacurrents in space are rare, or at least not normally seen, let's drop the voltage. As we see this, the glow mode plasma stream will become a dark mode discharge, where the only place to see the light is at the sides. As we let air back into the chamber and see lightning return, and for the couple dozen scientists proving that solar wind, cosmic rays, and CMEs help trigger lightning, this is how the electricity gets to Earth invisibly, in dark mode. When that energy hits the atmosphere, however, it'll transform right back to lightning. Website members, you can watch that whole video at suspiciousobservers.org under Yelverton's lab. We will have a ton more coming on that topic. Also had your Fly on the Wall podcast post yesterday. Another hour takes us up over 150 hours total. We've got pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close and the weekly Mars weather report from Dr. August Dunning. It's 3.25 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. It's time for the Mars Weekly Review. On April 22nd, a coronal mass ejection left the Sun with a predicted arrival at the Martian orbit on the 27th. Normally, the solar wind impacts Mars with a constant assault that removes a portion of the atmosphere and the storm that left the Sun on the 22nd apparently mostly missed the planet. On Mars, when the front of a solar storm collides with the induced magnetic field, this erosion is dramatically increased. It appears that there was only a glancing blow, as can be seen in the Sirtis Major region on the day before the arrival, only slight reduction in atmospheric condensation on the 27th as the increased solar wind pressure affected high water vapor. The Tharsis shield volcanoes may have turned into the blow as the rapid reduction of caldera peak cloud change is most evident on the 27th. Down in the Terra Serenium, 
around 55 south, 180 east over the strongest crustal magnetic fields, atmospheric gases and dust were lifted into the atmosphere, creating storms that moved into the Valmarineris Canyon system, which experienced dense fogs that lingered in the deepest parts of the region. High clouds moved across the opportunity at Endeavor Crater in the first part of the week, and the curiosity at Gale Crater had storm-free skies all week. Conclusion? Mars was lucky. Mars was mostly missed by the solar storm this time.